Once again, good evening, hockey fans. Welcome to Rensselaer and Houston Fieldhouse for this ECAC matchup between the Big Green of Dartmouth and your homestanding engineers of Rensselaer. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, the visitors from Dartmouth. Starting in the goal, number 33, Devin Buffalo. At left defense is number six, Connor Yao. At right defense for Dartmouth, number 24, Brendan Less. The starting forwards for the Big Green. At left wing, number 10, Shane Seller. At center is number 28, Will Graver. And at right wing for the Big Green, number 17, Quinn Foreman. Rest of the Dartmouth College Big Green and their head coach, Bob Gardet. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for the engineers of RPI. <laughs> Leading your engineers on the ice tonight, please welcome the junior engineer, Anthony Barna. <laughs> starting in the goal for RPI, he's a freshman from Victoria, British Columbia, number one, Lyndon Marshall. Number 12, Victor Liljegren. At center, a sophomore from Mississauga, Ontario. Number 16, Jacob Hayhurst. And at right wing, a sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. Number 17, Todd Burgess. The rest of the engineers, their head coaches, Dave Smith, assistant coaches, Nolan Graham, and Dan Jewell. Now we direct your attention to center ice. We will honor 20 local children receiving special recognition for academic achievement as part of the Rising Stars. They'll receive tonight's Rising Stars Award. Supported by National Grid Foundation, these 20 Rising Stars are local school students who will receive a trophy to recognize their academic achievements. Top students at each grade from the participating schools have been selected by their teacher to receive this honor. Now presenting the trophies to these deserving children, Mr. Ed White, president of the National Grid Foundation, Dr. Lee McElroy, Ritzler's associate vice president and director of athletics. Joining them at center ice, the Honorable Steve McLaughlin, Ritzler County Executive, RPI Senior Advancement Officer Deborah Chesky, also Lori Potinsky of Albany National Grid, and Troy Deputy Mayor Monica Krzykowski. The children receiving the awards are from School 16, School 18, School 14, and Carroll Hill School. We ask that you hold your applause until all the children have received their awards. Congratulations to the National Grid Foundation and especially to these rising stars. Thank you very much. Job well done. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats. We have a special moment now. On January 27th, Rensselaer Hockey Community lost a dear friend in Matt Graves. Matt covered the engineers for the Albany Times Union for more than 20 years. In his honor, we ask that you please join us in a moment of silence. Thank you. Please remain standing and direct your attention to the home penalty box next to the home team bench where RPI fan San Susie, Sonia Susi, and seventh grader from Northville Central School, Emma Real, will play the national anthems of Canada and the United States of America.
Canada and the U.S. before we start this one. It's RPI in Dartmouth, the rematch. Our, uh, Dartmouth got the better of the engineers back uh, in early January, a 6-5 overtime win in which Dartmouth took a 4-1 lead. Uh, the engineers came back to, to go up 5-4. An extra attacker goal for Dartmouth in the last minute and a half, and then an overtime winner leaves a bad taste in your mouth if you're RPI and you want to get that one back here tonight. Uh, yeah, definitely, Perry, um, especially uh, after having fought so hard to get that one and to drop it at the end there. Um, I think they'll definitely, like Coach Smith mentioned, look to uh, give up a few fewer than five today. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, clearly a key here tonight. RPI are, is without its backup goaltender, as mentioned by Coach Smith, uh, out with an injury is Chase Perry. So Kyle St. Dennis is the backup sophomore from uh, Katona, New York. Lyndon Marshall again, the starter for the Engineers, 4 13 and 2 on the season, 2 9 4. Goals against a 9 11 save percentage. Freshman from Victoria, BC, the reigning ECAC Hockey Rookie of the Week. And for Dartmouth, it's Devin Buffalo, senior from Wetaskiwin, Alberta, 8 8 and 1 on the season, 2 9 1 goals against, 9 06 save percentage. So not a big difference numbers wise between these two goalies. We expect a close game again as we had up in Hanover. Yeah, absolutely not. And, um, you know, it tells the story. It's 6 5 game last time, a lot of high scoring. So uh, hopefully we'll get some entertainment here tonight, Perry. RPI will be skating from right to left. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union, which provides funding for WRPI and all the club related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. As the Big Green are in their home greens, the white trim, RPI home, or road greens, I should say, home whites for the engineers, of course, with the red shoulders, red helmets, and it's Todd Burgess quickly up the far side boards for Jacob Hangers into the zone looking for Lilgren, tipped off his stick and in deep. Brandon Les battles for it there for Dartmouth. Free to the half wall, now out to center. Come the Big Green, cross ice pass broken up by Hayhurst, glove down at center by Shane Seller. Back to Yao who dumps it in. Lyndon Marshall will stop it behind his goal to our right. As it's fed through center by T.J. Samick all the way through everybody. Gathered in by Cameron uh, Roth just off the bench. Or Roth, rather. Roth trying to feed it through traffic in the middle. It's broken up by Billy Jerry, who scoops it into the offensive zone. Roth back to get it. Pressured by Tyrannies. Works it up the wall. On further for Foreman. And it's just dumped in as Dartmouth wants to complete a change. Mike Prapp of S's team leader with 15 assists on the year, finds classmate Jared Wilson, who gives it away in the neutral zone. Flipped along by Jasic. Gathered in by Prapp of S's. Touch pass ahead for uh, Jerry. Now carried on further by Donovan Ott. He'll hand it off to Tyrannies towards goal. Ott looking for the redirect, and it's loose in front. Finally covered by Buffalo. Nifty play there as Tyrannies just trying to throw it at the net with Ott and Jerry crashing. It's not a bad idea with those two big bodies going towards that goal. Yeah, that's a great play. He definitely recognized he was coming down that left-hand wall. He had a couple of his men streaking, and I think that might have even hit the uh, Dartmouth stick on its way in, but uh, just never a bad play to get pucks on that earlier. Same thing he had at the other end here, shot from outside the blue line that Linden had to fight off in the early going. Face off here in the Dartmouth zone. Shot comes from Wilson. It deflects wide to the corner. It'll come all the way out towards center. Kolk had a crack at it. And now Prapavesis past Owen Stout, who's back in there for the engineers, making his 11th appearance. It's been a while since Stout has cracked the lineup. Good to see him back in there. Wilson, far side of his own zone. Long stretch pass, two line pass, tipped in deep by Patrick Polino. Looking for his first collegiate goal, or excuse me, his first goal of the year is Polino after a solid freshman. The assess have been there nine, but it's not the goals. Hoping to get off the schneid here tonight, and he'll head off to the bench as the engineers with a quick change here. Two minutes in, no score. RPI and Dartmouth from the Houston Fieldhouse. On WRPI, it's uh, Tommy Grant battling for it behind the goal. Mears Moore also back in the lineup for the engineers. Moore playing in just his 13th game, although he missed a good portion of the year due to injury early on. Tie up below the goal line, RPI, and Jake Morello has his man wrapped up back there. As uh, finally dig at three, it was Mikulowski. Jaron Burke to center, on for Morello. Stick handles to the Dartmouth line, picked up by Jesper Orval. Tap back out to center, where Mears Moore picks it back up again. Junior defenseman from Duluth, Minnesota. Quickly along for Morello, just waits at the blue line, tips it in deep. Burke throwing his body around in, behind the goal. Now a shot by Semek, skips wide. May have caught the foot of Buffalo in the end. As it's carried back the other way, Dartmouth will ring it in. Pops in the air to the near corner. T.J. Samick, first one to it. Up the wall for Burke. 
Doesn't quite get to him. It's broken up there by Foreman. Now lobbed in the air. Uh, picked up by Shoup. He'll go D to D in his own zone for Roth. Shot all the way down. Marshall loses that edge and falls down. Helps it to the corner with his goalie stick before heading back to the crease. And now another edge lost. It was Burgess who just fell down in the circle. Carried out by Hayhurst. Lost it for a second. He'll turn back towards his own end. Now he throws it off the leg. There's a giveaway and a shot and a pad stop by Marshall. Another shot blocked. Picked up by Burgess. Finding Hayhurst. RPI finally able to settle things down. Kind of a circus act going on for a moment in their own end there. And they dump it in. And now we get an icing call here. 16-30 uh, left in the first period. No score. RPI and Dartmouth after a good early start. The engineers uh, kind of turned the puck over in their own end there. And we're kind of lucky that uh, Dartmouth didn't capitalize on a chance maybe. Yeah, still in the early going, Perry, but uh, just a little bit of not crispness. Um, RPI, uh, yeah, just fighting the puck a little bit. Uh, sorry, I'm still warming my voice up yeah. too. But, uh, yeah, then just a little let up there from Samick. Couldn't make the red. Face off in the engineer's end. Picked up by Prapavessis. RPI doing a much better job in the second half of the year, winning over 51% of their draws after being down around 43% in the first. It's rung in by Dartmouth around to the near side corner. Waiting for it, Rutherford. It'll go behind to the far corner now. All the way to the point. She's blocked down there. And it's uh, worked back into Dartmouth territory. Good hit by Tyrannies on Reemsma. And it's uh, now picked up by Blankenmeyer. Shot all the way down. Will this be icing on Dartmouth? Yes, now we have icing the other way. And, uh, uh, we're not uh, a little over four minutes into this one. RPI with a 3 2 edge in shots as uh, they're going to RPI TV throwing a replay back. And yeah, that might have been a goal for Tyrannies if that went in. And that early chance for RPI it was deflected on goal by the defenseman shoot. Yeah, uh, very much so. Uh, All the way back in the uh, beginning of this game, uh, right? Dartmouth, uh, a Dartmouth error possibly as Buffalo was sprawling across, and that five hole comes open a lot of times on that move. Cleared out by River Reemsma, a senior from Huntington Woods, Michigan. Dumped right back in by the engineers, however. Reemsma up the wall. Waiting for it there is Jacek to center. Blankmeyer, and now in deep. Behind the RPI goal. Worked to the corner. Dropped back to the point into the skates of the defenseman Les. Uh, just wrapped in by Yao. Jacek tied up there. Picked up just off the bench. Walking in is Baker. Baker trying to move his way in. And it's shot to the side of the goal, saved by Marshall. Another stop there with the glove, trying to find it, and he'll cover. Second shot, sneaky difficulty level there. Sneaky difficult for, for Marshall, who didn't see it. I think he hit his glove, but he was in just good position there to stop that second effort. Yeah, Perry, a lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of puck watching in the engineer end. A lot of engineers crashing down into the zone, but uh, not strong enough sticks and not taking their men out of the play. So um, just a couple bounces and a chance for uh, Dartmouth, but Linden does well to recover. Matt Baker, a good freshman year. Eight goals, five assists for 13 points in 21 games. Out of Barry, Ontario. He'll take this draw here until he, well, he give him another chance. Spins out to take this face off, and it's one back to last. Shot goes wide from the near point. Picked up there by Donovan Ott. Ott fires it down ice. This will be icing again on RPI. I think he might have been looking for a tip from Terriers that didn't come. And he'll force the face off back to the RPI end. We are 14.56 left in the first. Dartmouth now with a 5-3 edge in shots, but we are scoreless. Yeah, the good idea there, Perry. Tyrannies uh, had some speed across, uh, across the blue on the right side of the ice, but uh, just couldn't reach it. Face off coming to the right of Lyndon Marshall. And it'll be one back again by the big green. Shot coming from Kalk. It was blocked by bodies in front. And now moved out to center. Tyrannies for Jerry. Back to Tyrannies. Three on two if they hurry. Man trailing is Riley. Drop pass. They're looking for Ott. Skipped off his stick. Now Riley with a tight angle shot is blocked. Down low. Tyrannies and Jerry try to work for it. But it's Matt Baker who comes away with it for Dartmouth. His outlet pass is off the mark, and will this be icing on Dartmouth? Yes. Four icing calls early, two each way. This one comes five and a half in, and uh, not a lot of flow when you get all these icings, but the engineers will take the offensive zone draw here. Yeah, and, uh, they had a good line rush, so definite uh, good moment there. Tyrannies tried to throw a little uh, saucer pass, came up a little chunky and jumped over the stick of his man on the far wing, but um, good rush, good pressure to the net, and... Uh, 
better things. Flip to center off the defensive zone win for the big green. Wilson into the skates of Orval. And now here's Morello trying to make a move, hit a skate. Would have been off there, maybe, or on man chance. But as it is, it's in deep for Burke. Burke turning, circle. Still Burke, a shot, he scores! Jaron Burke with his first collegiate goal. No one picked him up in the circle, and he rifled to the bottom lower corner. 1-0 RPI. Yeah, that's a great effort, Perry. A little bit of a broken play coming in over the blue with a missed pass and uh, ended up in the skates of the Dartmouth player, but that line just kept pressing and pressing, and Burke ends up finding it in the uh, left-hand corner and just shoots one five ball, I believe it was, from about the right-hand face-off dot. Showed good speed to get around there with the puck and uh, maintain it. The Dartmouth guys just let off a little bit on D. Nobody really on him, and he had enough space to get a shot away. One nothing, Engineers. It's good work by Morello on that play. RPI kept the play alive uh, deep. Talk about face-off wins and what those can do for a team. When you're winning more than half of them, you get a chance like that where a face-off win turns into a scoring chance, turns into a goal, and that's exactly where you see the payoff. Yeah, that's exactly right, Perry. Um, and then I think going forward, the engineers will want to be wary of that, too, as they've had a couple, uh, Dartmouth has had a couple good offensive zone draws as well. Back to the engineers' end after the big green dump it in. Prap of Vessis up the wall, too far for everybody. Was it touched, though? Apparently not. And apparently, oh, Lilgeren hard to the end wall. Not touched by anyone. Hopefully he's okay. It looked like he had a chance to beat out in the rules in terms of hybrid icing, beat out the ice. It looked like he was the first one down, but he's now slowed to his feet, and engineers don't need this if Lilgeren isn't able to continue here. He went hard into the end boards by himself. He was just trying to stop. Yeah, Perry, he's, um, he's being helped to the bench right now, but uh, like you say, the hybrid icing... Just if the referees are a little late on the whistle, you can still end up with some collisions there. And um, and you hate to see a bottom of the player skates right on his blades hit the dasher like that. So um, hopefully you can uh, get back in this one, but uh, that could be a big blow. Yeah, engineers need their top goal scorer, point, uh, not point getter, but goal scorer with nine. RPI five, two, and one. And if you're scoring at home, engineers have five wins on the year. So when he gets a point. So if he isn't able to go, RPA is going to have to find a way to get one of those wins without Vic scoring. As it comes in on goal, trickling in on Marshall, he'll cover up. As uh, they're announcing Jaron Burke's goal, uh, his first collegiate tally, and it was a one to remember, surely. Not one of those cheap ones you get. He worked for that one. It was a good shot and a good hockey goal. Yeah, you're definitely right, Perry. He uh, he battled hard. He and his line mates were all uh, working hard down low, and he was the benefactor, but uh, made a good play, stepped out confidently into the slot, and got his shot away, and he was rewarded. Burke from Jake Morello and Jesper Orval. So that fourth line gets the first goal for the Engineers. Puck to center. Picked up by Owen Stout. He'll flip it in deep. Stout looking for his first collegiate goal. Has three assists on the year in his previous ten games. Worked out to center ice by the big green. Rutherford making a move on uh, Grant. Centering pass. Knocked away but not out of the zone. Kept in at the point there by Dem uh, Demler. Demler back to the blue line. Reemsma near side. Rutherford a wrist shot over the top. Caroms off the glass behind Marshall. Polino will take the safer road, of, or so he thought, behind the goal, but it's knocked away. Forced up the boards by Grant with one hand. Lifted off the glass to center by Whiffin. Collision at center ice. Uh, nice job to hold his ground there, Polino. Work it back for Grant, who can't corral all the way in deep. Dartmouth wants to change, however, for, so our RPI has some time. 12 minutes, 45 seconds to play in the first period. 1-0 Engineers. On a goal by Jaron Burke. Tipped in deep by Owen Stout. First one to it is Yao. Connor Yao connects to center ice for Baker. To the RPI line, gathered in by Will Riley, sophomore from Toronto. He'll skate behind his own goal with it. Stick handling, throws a neat little pass for Jerry, didn't see it right away. Helped towards the zone by Ott, but that's broken up as well. TJ Samick back in his own zone as the engineers restart. D did not get the redirect from Jerry. This will be another icing here on RPI. And uh, neutralized passing. Hasn't been a strength so far, but just eight minutes in, still plenty of time to correct that. And with a 1-0 lead, you can't uh, be too disappointed on the start for RPI here. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. And you know, you mentioned the passing. It's obviously not as crisp as they would want to be coming out of the gate, but um, like I said, it was a broken play that led to the first goal and just some uh, hard-nosed forechecking, so they can stick with that plan for sure. Engineers down to forward right now as Victor Liljegren is uh, back in the locker room, hopefully getting uh, fixed up to try and rejoin the club here. Keep you updated on where his whereabouts are. But right now, down on the bench. Shot in towards goal. Side of the cage. It's popped off the side of the net. Nice job to keep that left leg against the post by Marshall. Loose in the far circle. But uh, Warpaka couldn't corral. Now a shot goes wide from the half boards. Goes behind the net once more. Riley up the wall. Ott can't clear. Tied up there by Foreman. Or excuse me, make that Roth. And now RPI from behind its own goal. Riley to the blue line for Tyrannies. Can't clear the zone. Second effort from Jerry. Upends his man. That was Mikulowski. Now it's flipped up into the RPI bench. Whiffin, who was sitting on the bench, tried to glove it. And he couldn't. Fortunately, that's not part of the game. We have a center ice draw coming up here. 11.30 to play in the first one nothing Engineers. Yeah, Perry, just a little bit of a dicey moment there down at the engineer net. Um, Marshall had his uh, had his paddle out to try to protect against the past at the slot and uh, just stopped the puck on his near post there. Yeah, kind of popped up in the air. Could have gone anywhere, even inside that near post, but looked like he was in good position to have that covered. Now a steal in the offensive zone. Orval to the point. Wilson a shot that hit a skate. And now uh, Cornell or Dartmouth, whoever it is, wants to break the other way. Walking in, a centering pass and a save. Actually turned into a shot from Graber. One of these teams. Now Reemsma shot save. As a sprawling Marshall got the five hole to, together seemingly just in time. Still on the attack, a shot and a goal. Center bar. And it's going to be Will Graber, who scored against the Engineers earlier this year. He ties it up at one. Yeah, that's a really nice skill play there, Perry. Uh, Marshall had a couple of good saves on the rush. They uh, redirected that one pass, but uh, the puck pops out into the middle there. And uh, Graber is able to pick it up, makes a couple stick handles, finds just a little bit of space, and that, uh, that backhander quickly over the glove of Marshall is pretty much an unstoppable shot from that position. No blame on Marshall for this one. He's out and up almost at the top of his crease. Just a um, little miscommunication there. Nobody on RPI decided to pick him up and um, picks up an early tally there to tie it up. Will Graber who did have uh, the third goal against RPI the first time these two teams met. It was a 6-5 Dartmouth victory as it's kicked back in front of the Dartmouth goal. Picked up by Moore at the point. He hammers it wide intentionally. Turned on goal by Tyrannies. Picks up the rebound and put it wide before he got dumped. Picked up by Burgess in the near corner. Back to the blue line and it leaves the zone. Moore has to backpedal as it just uh, forced him out to center ice. Right back in they come. It's Moore. Near side circle. Takes a wrister over the top of Buffalo. Kept in by the skate of Tyrannies on the far side. Here's Hayhurst, backhanded in front. Looking for a shot, Burgess, no. Towards the blue line and back out to center once more. D to D pass from Moore on for Grant, and Grant ices it here. And we're getting another whistle. 10-0-1 to play in the first. 1-1 RPI and Dartmouth for Graber, his sixth of the year. Yeah, and unfortunately that's going to kill the momentum there for the engineers. The icing call after uh, Good period uh, offensive effort there for the engineers. A couple good chances on net. Just um, moving the puck around behind the net, using their D, and a good chance at the near post here on uh, Buffalo's right. He was able to turn away. Face off coming up in the RPI end. Grant is tied up there in the corner with Strong. And they'll continue to scrap. Peeled out by Rutherford to the point. A wrist shot coming. That one hit bodies. Turned wide of goal on the backhand by Cam Strong. And now in deep, it's Hayhurst. A lot of energy from Strong, the sophomore from Billings, Montana. Worked that puck free back to the point. Shot back in by Shoup. All the way around to the far half wall it goes. Blankmeyer. Cycling for Strong. Strong in the far circle, trying to walk it out in front. Stolen away by Tyrannies, who lefts it in the air, high off the glass, out to center. Gathered back in by Roth. Chipped in, hit the linesman on the far side. That'll allow the engineers to regather, and then they ice it. As Tyrannies goes uh, head to the sky there after he just uh, was errant with that delivery up ice. Another icing here on RPI sends the draw back to their own end. Yeah, really good shift for the fourth line from Dartmouth there. Um, got it handed to him, scrapping down low, cycling, moving the puck, and uh, trying to wear out this engineer defense. 
Face off. One by the big green into the corner. Moore battles with it there. To the half wall for Graber, the goal scorer. Graber trying to walk it out to, to the front of the net. It was broken up by Hayhurst, but it pops right to Foreman. Quinn Foreman, freshman from Needham, Mass, into the middle of the far circle. Seller was pressured there. They work it back to the point. It's the big green possessing the puck here in the offensive zone over the last couple of minutes. Finally, RPI able to clear in a race for the puck. First one to it will be Demler. Brendan Demler, another freshman. He's on a Lebanon, Ohio. It'll be shot in, tipped in deep to avoid the Iceman icing by Foreman. Now Marshall, some trouble at the side of the net. They give it away, and Dartmouth scores. It's Graber again. And that was just some lackadaisical play there from RPI in its own zone, including Marshall, who went behind the net and couldn't get back in time. It's 2-1 to one Big Green. Yeah, Perry, unfortunately, Graber's just going to be the benefactor there. Marshall goes behind the net to play the puck. Just a little slow getting back and uh, doesn't get enough help from his defenseman. And quick pass out to Graber from the uh, man behind the net. Didn't catch who it was. Looks like it was Foreman. Moved it quickly out to him, saw him, and yep. Graber made no mistake on the one touch right into the side of the net. Yeah, and he went near post, back to where Marshall was trying to get to. Uh, for Graber, it's his second of the game. Second in a matter of uh, a minute here. Or yeah. two minutes, excuse me. So as soon as we, uh, you know, we got them clearing the snow right now, so this right. would be a good chance for the engineers to regroup a little bit. It's almost like a free timeout. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, good chance to uh, get your top line out there uh, if, Li if Lil Chagrin's available. Haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I don't think he's in back. Vic uh, went into the end wall on his own, mind you. A one-car crash into the end boards behind the Dartmouth goal trying to stop after an icing call that I'm sure the engineers wished the whistle would have come a little sooner but at some time it's just the case you know, Vic wasn't able to stop his momentum now it's tipped into the Dartmouth bench watch out over there four guys behind the bench <laughs> not wearing masks that could have been dangerous for Dartmouth. Yeah, Perry, so the little chagrin, um, you know, we were talking about that, the icing. It's just, uh, you know, a race to the race to the dots, and obviously the little chagrin thought he had a chance and was busting pretty hard, and if the uh, other player isn't rushing, he can definitely run into some late whistles. The two Graber goals are 28 seconds apart to give Dartmouth a 2-1 to one lead. Far point, Connor Yao works it deep. Mikulowski. Cycling for Warpeka. Now in deep, trying to find Mikulowski again. Krapovacis picks it up. Ice has been tilted in Dartmouth's direction. Engineers trying to change that. RPI said a couple of nice spells of offensive possession, but they haven't taken as much time as Dartmouth has. Here's a tie-up at the half wall near side of the Dartmouth zone now. 2-1 to one, Big Green, 7.22 to play in the first period. Mears Moore to the far point. Some room for Tommy Grant to step into one. And a save by Buffalo that allowed Grant to walk it all the way to the top of the right circle for he laid into one, but it was right on goal, and Buffalo held on. Yeah, Perry, uh, obviously Grant's got a lot of space there. He walks down the right side, but um, not enough bodies in front for the engineers. They kind of cleared out, and uh, Dartmouth was able to clear a lane. Buffalo saw it the whole way. First uh, Dartmouth goal at 9.08 was Graber from Seller and Reemsma. The second one at 11.36 was Graber from Foreman and Seller. So a couple assists for Shane Seller this evening. As it's picked up by Shoup in his own zone. A little bit of pressure. He works it down the middle for Baker. Baker far side. That pass broken up. Tierney's trying to jump on it, but it's swept away by Shoup. The senior from Upper St. Clair, PA, who goes back to his own zone. Wrapped to the near side. Stolen away. On walking in and a save there by Buffalo. It was basically one-on-one. -on -one. Ott lined up a hard wrist shot, and Buffalo stood his ground at the top of the crease. Yeah, Perry, unfortunately, he had some room. Buffalo recognized that he was going to shoot as he took the big wind-up, really took his time, kind of stopped his feet moving, and he'd give himself a much better chance if he takes another stride or two hard towards that center of the crease. Ott maybe had more time than he thought there as he... Uh, 
It's a good job though by the engineers forcing that offensive zone turnover. And get some nice chances if they can continue to do that. Reemsma, good connection far side into the RPI zone. Dropped it back. Reemsma nearly got in the way of his own man there as it's uh, kept in near point by Graber. Graber with the last two looking for the natural hat trick in front. Turning and shooting backhand. He put it wide. He nearly did as it's poked to the near side corner. Would have been one of the faster natural hat tricks you'll, you'd have seen. And now Hayhurst picks up a loose puck. He'll break in one on one with the defender. Makes a move to the net. Pushed away by Buffalo. It looked like the Dartmouth defender was going for the hip check there. And he kind of missed. Just got a piece of Hayhurst. Enough to steer him off course. Seller to center. Finding Graber. The man of the hour for Dartmouth. Two line pass. Far side connection. Here's Quinn Foreman into the zone. Pestered by Riley. Riley goes down. Foreman stays on the puck behind the goal. On for Seller. Seller a centering pass. One time try. Second try. No. Right pad stopped there by Marshall. If Rutherford got that first attempt off, he might have had a better chance. As Marshall was going right to left, he just snuck that left leg out and denied Colin Rutherford. Yeah, Perry, that puck was uh, that puck was moving pretty quickly around the zone and came to the slot area, and Linden pushed off his post just a little bit and uh, made a good save on the shot that did come towards that near post here on his left side. Two to one, Dartmouth. 5:50 to play in the first period. Engineers and Big Green. From the Houston Fieldhouse, there's a giveaway today. Some some posters at the front door of uh, Matt Patricia, 1996 grad of RPI, who is now the head coach of the Detroit Lions. That's right. Formerly the defensive coordinator of the Patriots, he coached the Pats in six Super Bowls, winning three. Sure, it's not the percentage that the Patriots wanted, but surely the number is hard to argue with. Three Super Bowl wins. As a coordinator, go on to get your first head coaching job. It's got to be exciting for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, unfortunately for uh, the Indianapolis Colts, he was the only Patriots coordinator <laughs> to move on to a head coaching role. A little right. bit of drama Josh there. Josh McDaniels, the right. Josh McDaniels, if you didn't know, said he was going to go coach the Colts and then backed out after they'd already made a, I guess, a minor announcement, not an official, official announcement, but as good as an announcement they made for Patricia, who stuck with it and is now the head coach. Uh, press conference was a couple days ago. Anyway, back to action here. Five and a half to go for his period. Two to one, Big Green. From the point, a shot never got to goal. Rutherford tied up nicely there by Billy Jerry, the RPI freshman centerman. And then Jerry just dumps Rutherford at the near wall. Kept in, however, and a shot towards that near post by Strong. And Blankmeyer gets dumped. Strong goes to see what's going on, and Jerry and Rutherford continue their one on one out after the whistle. Yeah, just a little bit of a uh, little bit of frustration, I think, maybe from the engineers. Um, haven't had the most disciplined night on defense. They obviously started out with a great goal and great effort, and they're showing some grit down in the Dartmouth end. They just need to find a way to get out of their own. Shots are 12-9 Dartmouth here. But the time on attack numbers, which I don't have for you, would surely favor the big green here. They've had the puck in the RPI end. For a good portion of this period, with five minutes left, big collision at center ice as Burke and ended up really knocking down Orval with Tim Shoup involved as well for the other guys. Puck in the corner, Moore trying to find it, and now another hit there on Mikulski, Mikulowski rather, Orval. Lifting it out of the zone, a race here, maybe a two-on-one with Burke. Orval and Burke walking in. Orval is shot over the top. The lone defender there was Tim Shoup, and he cut off the pass, forcing a shot from Orval. And now another chance here for Burke. Far side of the net. He's wrapped up by Shoup. Fans maybe looking for a holding call, not going to get it here. Lobbed off the boards to center ice by the big green. Whack to the near side. TJ Samick carries back in. Into the skates of Whiffin. Whiffin a shot, just missing the right post. To the point for Riley. Riley to the middle of the ice, turning with it, Whiffin. Whiffin shooting, and he put it wide again. Rebound to Hayhurst. Hayhurst picks it up, bottom of the circle. Trying to throw it near point. It's intercepted. And skated out by Mikulowski. He'll eventually dump it in and avoid an icing here. Samick behind his own goal. Engineers have been dangerous when they've been in the offensive zone. They've been uh, more efficient, I guess you could say, with the, the generating of chances in the offensive zone than Dartmouth has. 
Although the Big Green have finished off two to RPI's one. Yeah, absolutely, Perry. Three good scoring chances there. Just uh, unable to hit the net all three times. Just a little high, just a little wide. But um, some good, definitely a good rush by Orval on the far wall. Made the good chip and uh, just missed over the glove side. So a uh, little bit of life here in the engineers. Face-off win for the Big Green. Turning and feeding it in front there it is Matt Baker trying to throw an extra pass in the slot. Didn't connect. It works its way to the near half wall of the RPI zone. Kept in at the point. A wrist shot that goes wide from the blue line by Demler. Near side boards. Whiffin lost it. In front, a shot. Save made by Marshall. Another stop there. And the puck goes over the top. An incredible right pass save. Engineer's not out of the woods yet, although Burgess knocks his man down. Kept in at the point. Demler, far side circle. Baker is shot over the top. To the near side now, kept in by Les. A sure goal denied by Marshall moments ago. To the slot again, a shot and a save on the left pad by Marshall. Back to the point for Les near side. He'll filter it up the wall for Jacek. Jacek, his pass broken up, but it eventually gets to the intended target. It's called to the side, and Marshall gets a much needed whistle. I thought for sure Dartmouth scored there on the backdoor play. Kalk setting up his man in the far circle. But my goodness, a right pad stop by Marshall. Yeah, absolutely, Perry. I think he knew he was there. He sensed him on the back post as he has completely sprawled across uh, the Dartmouth man shooting into a wide open net. And uh, Baker. Marshall just uh, definitely earned himself a few Gatorades after this game from his defenders. Baker on second look. Marshall got across pretty well. Uh, but one of those bang bang plays you expect a goal to come from. Shot by Shoup goes wide from the point. Another defensive or offensive zone faceoff win for the Big Green. Swept into the zone deeper by Foreman. Behind the net. Left there for Graber. Tried to center, intercepted, and lobbed out to center ice by Ott. And now back to their own end. It's picked up by Connor Yao. Junior Yao from Algonquin, Illinois. Works it to the far side boards. Kept in there by Ott. A shot was blocked. And it's carried back the other way. Here comes Foreman. Foreman into the zone. Nice job to ride him off the play by Wilson. And now it's Wilson ahead for Tyranny. Tyrannies will skate it to center. Three on three as they cross the red line. He'll just dump it in. Back to pick it up behind the goal is Roth. Or Reemsma, rather. Graber, far side for Yao, lobbing it to center. Glove down. This should be a hand pass on RPI. 2.04 to play in the first period. 2 to 1, Dartmouth. Plenty of excitement and chances both ways. Uh, Big Green also leading in shots 16 to 9. Yeah, Perry, two minutes left here. Uh, another defensive zone draw for the Engineers. A uh, good opportunity to uh, end the period strong and get some play in the, uh, in the Dartmouth end and not give up another one before they go into the first break. Face off in the RPI zone. One off to Mikulowski. Hit thrown there. Mikulowski carries it up the wall now. Pestered all the while. Warpeka knocked down by Grant. Orval gets it as, excuse me, as far as center ice. Shot around to the near side from Mikulowski. Gets dumped by Burke again. Jaron Burke having himself a first period. Some big hits and also the only RPI goal. Will this be icing? No, they wave it off. Reemsma, they say, could have played it. Eventually then does. And now Dartmouth returns the favor by actually icing the puck in real life. 128 to go in the first period. It's 2-1 Dartmouth. Yeah, Perry, definitely a good hit here on the near wall for Burke. He's, uh, he's showing some energy here in this game, obviously getting his first collegiate goal. I'm sure he's all kinds of fired up. 128 on the clock here in the first period. Whiffin to take the draw up against Jamie McLaughlin. And it's won by the Big Green again. They've done a nice job in the circle so far. Faceoffs. Well, I'm wrong here. They're 13 13. Just had a, the feel, I guess. But RPI continues to show off its prowess in the circle. Flipped in deep by RPI here, at least numerically. With it, Stout in the near corner. Played by Kalk. Chance for Dartmouth to break three on two now into the zone. Jacek, centering pass, looking for Yao, the defenseman. He was the third man in. The D-man Yao, it just didn't connect. Samick 
They're trying to ring it out near side. There was no defenseman here on the near point. We'll see if this is icing. Oh, well, they wave it off. Oh, they don't. <laughs> oh, shoot back to play. I, uh, we must have broken into the double digits in icing. <laughs> I, think, now. I think so. 39.7. I, I actually stopped counting because I didn't want to know. <laughs> uh, but 37.9 left. We'll face off in the RPI end. Dartmouth leading this one 2 1. Yeah, it looks like they're going to stop and have a little discussion. Uh, referee's going to check in and make sure that the linesman played the uh, who's on the ice game right. So we can uh, start action up here with, this, with the correct five on the ice for the engineers. Face off coming here. To the left of Marshall. Has had a good first period. Shot in by Les. Wrapped around to the far point. Demler, his shot goes wide. Caroms out to the side of the net. It'll be helped behind by Jared Wilson. Down the middle of the ice for Hayhurst. 25 to go in the period. Hayhurst stick handling the center. Far side, Burgess a shot. Sticked away into the netting by Buffalo, who quickly spins back around after he didn't hear a whistle. Uh, but uh, one did eventually come. A draw coming in the Dartmouth end. 18.4 to go in the period. Yeah, good line there from the engineers. Uh, good breakout. Uh, Hayhurst showing some good speed, made a nice pass here right before his, uh, his or the Dartmouth blue line, I should say, to his man, and uh, Buffalo turns one away into the netting. Draw coming up, near side of the Dartmouth end. Ott walking in, Ott with a shot that trickles wide. Actually knocked the stick out of Sellers' hand in the process. Near side, skips through Jerry, picked up by Prapovessis, throws it through everybody, picked up by Wilson at the point. Wilson trying to dump it into the corner. Stolen away by Foreman with three. A hit thrown there as Tierney's gets back defensively. And no shot can come from Quinn Foreman before the horn sounds, ending period number one. No penalties in the first. Shots were 16-10 Dartmouth. And the Big Green will take a 2-1 lead into the break. Faceoffs finished even 14-14 after 20 minutes. Yeah, Perry, that was a pretty even period, all things considered. Uh... You know, RPI definitely, they were outshot and out uh, out possessed in their own zone a little bit, but they're getting their chances, and I definitely think that they'll continue to uh, break down this, they'll continue to break down this uh, Dartmouth defense as the game goes on, as long as they can uh, put some focus on their own end, tighten up the screws a little bit, try not to puck watch so much, and continue to get the saves they need to get from Lyndon Marshall. Um, obviously, you had the one miscue that he'll for sure want back, but... Um, that may just make him want to come back and stand tall even more in the rest of this game. Absolutely. Teo, we will be back with our first intermission in just a bit. Your score after uh, one period of play is Dartmouth 2 and RPI 1. You're listening to RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Good to have you here. Um, so National Grid is obviously a utility company in the, the area, but uh, tell us a little bit about the National Grid Foundation. Yeah, so the National Grid Foundation uh, was created uh, 20 years ago by one of our predecessor companies. And so really our focus is uh, to give back to the local community, focused on education programs and environmental programs. Okay, and this is the fourth year that RPI's men's hockey team and National Grid Foundation have been joining forces for the Shoot for the Stars program. Can you tell us a little bit about the history there? Yeah, so um, we started about eight years ago with a um, program similar to this called Hoops for the Stars. Um, and then four years ago, we started our first and only hockey program with RPI. 
So this is the, the maiden voyage with the RPI, and it's been an outstanding program for the local school system, and the kids who show up for the games and are rewarded for their academic achievement um, are definitely um, reaping the benefits of the program. That's great. So earlier this evening, we saw some of the local kids receive the award for the Rising Star. Can you tell us a little bit about what qualified those children to receive the award? Yeah, so um, what we found over the years is we're always trying to make constant improvements with the program. And it's one thing to incent the kids um, with academic, you know, for academic achievement, behavior, or attendance um, and get them to a game. But this gives them something to be invested in the entire season. So they're actually competing to become rising stars. So we give them a trophy and the energy and the excitement level downstairs was great with the kids. Perfect. Um, how about you tell us just a little bit how you see the future of the foundation growing now that under your new leadership? Yeah, so I've been with the program now for about seven months. I'm very excited to be part of it and leading it. And really what we're trying to do is um, expand our giving, expand our reach, and look for new and innovative programs to really engage um, our communities at all levels. So we have um, academic programs not only for kids, but also financial literacy programs for adults. And we're really just trying to you know, find new and innovative ways to connect with our community. Great. Can't wait to see how it grows under your new leadership. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. This has been great.
Cummins Cups for the lead. Stop by, check out the engineer's swag. We'd like to remind you that Ryan's Wing is proud to support RBI athletics. Head downtown, every day, check out the pump kitchen at Ryan's Wing. Hi, I'm Dave Smith, coach in the RBI Hockey Club. And I'm Freddie Stewart Jones. Like RBI, our firm has been in Troy since the 1800s. And like RBI, we have a reputation for being one of the great best at what we do. The call for me, Stewart Jones, after Murphy, is among the most experienced Baseball. A reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org. You can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so long as WRPI is broadcasting. We'll provide that broadcast on WRPI.org. Team's back, uh, headed back out of the ice for period number two. Engineers hoping for a bounce back frame. They, it's really kind of a wishy-washy first period. It was kind of hard to put my finger on how that went, Dale. Obviously, Dartmouth scored the two goals. One of them was a bit of a misplay in the defensive zone, and engineers certainly weren't as sharp as they were last Saturday. They're going to need to find that again. You're not playing the number one team in the country, but you need to play like it every game or you're not going to win. Yeah, um, you know, like we were talking off air. It's just uh, there's no rhythm to this game so far, that first period. A lot of icing calls, no penalties, but just a lot of whistles. And, uh, you know, like you said, the ice looked tilted towards the engineer end a little bit. But um, a few chances that if the engineers can just uh, make the best of those as they continue to move forward, maybe get the uh, crowd into it a little bit here, I'm sure they can be pretty successful in the uh, last two thirds of this game. We are set for the second. Shots are 16 10. Big green. No penalties in the first. With all the whistles and everything, there were any penalties. So. I guess we can look at that as a positive. Yeah, pretty clean period all around. A lot of times the second time around, you're going to have, or at least when two teams play, you're going to have maybe a little bit of animosity, but nothing really. Maybe some, a couple of back and forths after the whistle, but nothing to really speak about. Drop the puck. Period number two is underway. Five aside, of course, as Will Riley rings it in. Near side, wrapped around to the corner. Half boards comes free, poked at, gathered in there. Backhander, no from Orval. Or, that no, was Orval. Seller will chip into the RPI end. Will Riley back to pick it up there. Lost sight of it, kicked free to Foreman. Stolen away by Hayhurst. Poked up the boards. Hayhurst uh, jumps on it there, lobs it near side, gathered by the skate of Burgess. Lobs it far side now for Orval. RPI have to do some mix, uh, miss, mixing and matching with no Victor Liljegren. Well, we're not going to see 
those succinct lines we had in the first. Here's Seller shooting at far side. A little bit of room over there. Fed towards the middle of the ice. Seller near side. A tight angle shot saved by Marshall. Didn't really have anything to shoot at. Marshall made the stop. It's picked up by Billy Jerry. Worked up the wall. Swatted back into the zone by Shoup. Near wing. Plenty of room for Ott to move in. Ott feeding it towards the net. Looking for Jerry. Never got a shot away. Cleared towards the point. Kept in by Wilson. Fed towards the near point by Jerry. Hit somebody. Comes free to Prappa Vesses. Neutral zone will shoot it in. Wrapping around to the far half wall. Donovan Ott there. Throwing his big body in the way. Comes free to Tierney's. Near point. One-timer Prappa Vesses. He hammered it way wide. That one will leave the zone. All the way back to the RPI end. Wilson back to get it there. Little bit of pressure comes from Corey Kalk. And now Tierney's. Lost it to Kalk behind the cage. Kalk looking for a centering pass into the skates of Jacek. His shot hit the skate of Wilson. And it's popped loose. Wilson knocks his man down. Kalk lost his stick. Jacek will cycle. Finding Baker. Baker to the far side where the centering pass from Kalk goes all the way through. Ott had it for a moment. Now Prapavesis holding onto the puck near side circle of his own end. Now he'll skate it out to center as the teams back off, including a couple of changes for Dartmouth. Ott will lob it into the zone, knocked out of the air by Shoup. And Shoup will lob it back towards center. Kicked at for a second by Whiffen into the zone just on side of the big green. Warpeka down low. Stolen away. Here's Whiffen for RPI. Scored the eventual game winner against Cornell last time out. Tipped in deep by Polino. He'll chase. Takes a shoulder hit from Roth. Puck comes free to the slot. Kicked at, trying to find it there. Was Polino. Now a shot by Grant. Deflects wide off the glass. Roth one hands it towards the far half wall. Towards the blue line out to center. Shot back in by Moore, but the engineers need to touch up. They do, and then they're back on the chase. Demler near side. Up ahead, Warpeka to center ice. Some speed, McLaughlin. Near side. Walking off the wall, far side feed. A one-time shot and a save by Marshall. Loose behind the cage. And Dartmouth couldn't scrap to get it home. Back to the point now. Shot coming. That one hammered wide off the stick of Reemsma. Near corner. Twisting and turning. Mikulowski back to the point. Demler keeps it in. Fires way wide. Poked at by Moore. With Warpeka, it's Grant who comes away with it for the engineers. Tommy Grant to center. Junior from Sparta, New Jersey. He'll shoot it deep and go off on a change along with his teammates. 16.30 to play in the second. 2-1 to one, Dartmouth leads. And now it's another puck gets redirected uh, out of play towards the Dartmouth bench. We get a stoppage. 91.5 FM, WRPI, Troy, Perilous Garris, Teo Camadilla here at the Houston Fieldhouse. No score here so far in the second. Yeah, Perry, a couple uh, a couple okay chances for the big green in the uh, in the engineer end. Simple game, just uh, getting pucks out to the points, quick shots, a couple bodies in front. Face off at center. Comes free to Dartmouth here. And it's going to be TJ Samick in his own zone after the big green dump it in. Jake Morello, sophomore from the Slingerlands, not far away. Gets it right back on a 1 2 from Orval. Poked out of the zone. Dartmouth trying to counter. Here comes Strong. Tight angle shot, pad save, rebound still loose to the side of the cage, and it's going to be gobbled up by Marshall. Strong continues to fight, but there's nothing left to fight for as Marshall has the puck secured. Draw coming up in the engineer's end. Yeah, just a little bit of a moment there for Marshall. Uh, puck came at him from kind of an awkward angle to his low left, and it looked like it maybe hit his paddle and popped up. So uh, had to fight one off. Nobody able to get a stick on that as there are a few swinging around. Face to swat at it. Face off coming up. Shots are now 20 to 10. The fieldhouse is unusually cold here, Tao. I don't know what it is. Good crowd on hand. I believe over 3,000 tonight for this one. Dartmouth not a big draw yearly. As it's carried out to the far side, running out of room there was Seller. He just turns and whips it towards goal. It'll eventually come down in the near corner. Foreman stolen away by Prapavesis. Now a giveaway in front. Graber, he scores! And it's a natural hat trick for Will Graber. It's 3 to 1 Dartmouth. Yeah, Perry Graber will pick up his third and, um, you know, kind of another gift for him as the engineer's not able to come up this right hand half wall. 
and get out of the zone. Just a little bit of an ill-advised uh, redirect to the center. Graber picks it up in the slot right between the hash marks and rifles it over the uh, blocker side as uh, it was Prapavesis walking the puck up the wall and not able to uh, clear his own. So um, pretty tough break for the engineers. They uh, came out, started out the period well with a, uh, a good chance as Jerry was on the right side of a puck that was coming to the net front towards Buffalo, but um, but uh, just a bad turnover leading to a goal and not much that Lyndon Marshall could have done about that, in my opinion. First uh, hat trick by a Dartmouth skater since February 24th, 2017, so last February, when Corey Kolk had a hat trick in a 5-4 loss to St. Lawrence. And uh, just showing you how quickly St. Lawrence has really fallen. The SLU was number 20 in the country last February. And they have, I believe, one more win than the engineers right now. They're, they're six and, and 20. Is a whistle here and an icing. 15-23 to play in the second. Still over half of this game left, but RPI down a couple of goals now. On a natural hat trick by Will Graber. Yeah, Perry, and uh, at this point, you know, getting outshot pretty heavily and uh, missing a few chances in this game, making a bad turnover, it's time to just uh, show a little energy, maybe make a hit, and uh, connect on a few passes and make some good plays. Face off here in the RPI zone. The engineers win it. It's Jaron Burke. He has the lone RPI goal so far. Shoots it off a man at the Dartmouth line, and it's Roth turning with it there. Cameron Roth and now Tim Shoup to dump it in. Marshall leaves it aside. The last time these two teams met, Lyndon Marshall was pulled after giving up a four. Now walking in, Hayhurst tight angle, no, looking for the wraparound. Drop pass, Samick, Samick shoots, save made there by Buffalo, and a big one it was, keeping this a two-goal game as T.J. Samick walked right between the circles but was denied. Yeah, Perry, that's a great job from the engineers. Uh, uh, walking the puck around, I believe was Hayhurst. Hayhurst. Yep, he made a good play up the far left wall. Just kept it, kept it, kept it. And Samick steps down into the slot, gets a good shot away. Had Buffalo checking behind him for it, for sure. But um, good line rush there. First career hat trick for Will Graber. Makes it three to one. Engineers nearly brought it back to within one after uh, TJ Samick, who got his first collegiate tally not too long ago. For RPI. Nearly potted his second of the year. Wrapping around to the near half wall after the big green dump it in. Kept in by the pinch of Demler. Demler again for Warpeka. And McLaughlin poked free by Riley on for Polino. Polino ahead for TJ Samick. He'll dump it in off the near boards. First one to it, River Reemsma. Around to the far side. Through center, intercepted there by Stout, who shoots it off the glass and back in. Brendan Demler back to get it for Dartmouth. Six minutes into the second period, Dartmouth has made it a two goal lead. RPI scoring first, remember. And then we get an icing here on Dartmouth. Jaron Burke, his first collegiate goal. Got RPI off to a good start, but Dartmouth came back with three in a row, all by Will Graber. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, the first goal just came on a good hard-nosed play, a couple passes, and they took it to the uh, to the goal. But uh, since then, the engineers really never have established themselves in the offensive zone, uh, kind of attacking narrowly, straight up the ice, a lot of dump-ins, and uh, they're making it pretty easy for Dartmouth to get back out of their D zone. Face off to the right of Buffalo. Engineers win it. Mears Moore helps it up the wall. Donovan Ott down low. Tried to do a little handoff exchange with Tyrannies. That didn't work out. Donovan Ott sprawling to keep it alive and does. Tyrannies, goal line extended. Drop pass Ott looking for a shot that goes wide. Jerry was camped out in front. Pinching in Mears Moore in the corner. Trying to walk around the hit of Less. Still Moore. Mears Moore dodging Less. In the corner comes free now pinching in his grant both defensemen below the blue uh, below the uh, goal line now now they back off good fight from tyrannies pokes it loose Donovan Ott far side helps it back to the point Mears more some space he's closed down finds grant with a sharp pass who works it down low once more 
Behind the net, Jerry. Wraparound in front, stolen away. And skated out to center by Jamie McLaughlin. Now Cam Strong turns back towards his own zone. Finding Demler up the far wall. Now shot into the RPI zone near side. TJ Samick will corral. D to D pass behind the RPI net. Now Orval down the middle. Good connection to Tyrannies. Lost it on the stick handle. Fed back through center. Poked free. Carried on further. Rutherford tried to shoot it near side. It was broken up off the stick of Seller. Orval takes a hit. Puck comes free to Prapavasis at the near half boards. Now in deep. Seller to the near corner for Blankmeyer. Back to the point now. Shot comes. It was blocked up high off the stick of Ro uh, Roth. And now here's Prapavesis. Prapavesis will clear it off the glass out to center ice. Three to one Dartmouth with 12 12 left in the second period. We have two goal scorers in the game. One is Jaron Burke, the other is Will Graber. Here's Morello. Up ice far side, chips it in deep on the backhand. He'll go in after it, runs into Connor Yao. Burke there. Burke shielding far corner. Using his uh, big 6'3", 215 frame to hold off Connor Yao. Now to the near corner. Tommy Grant again pinches in. Thrown back towards the point. Leaving the ice was Morello. Hayhurst on. He'll pick it up and shoot it right back in. Buffalo will slow it up behind the Dartmouth net. Hands it off far side. Less up the boards. Mishandled there by Foreman, but carried on further. Poked loose at the RPI line. Hayhurst battles for it there. Work back for Lasso goes to Yao. Center ice. Near side red line. Chipped into the RPI zone. Foreman after Grant threw a hit. Comes free. Foreman had it for a moment. Grant goes down. Wrap poke checked by Wilson. Knocked it loose. And now it's cleared to center by the engineers. Gathered in by Demler. Back across far side to Reemsma. He'll use the near side wall and an indirect pass in deep off the stick of Baker. Wilson behind the RPI cage. Takes a hit from Colt. Wrap free. Picked up by Hayhurst. Little saucer pass on for Stout. Near side Burgess. Burgess corrals at the half wall. He'll lose it, but it goes in deep. Off a skate behind the Dartmouth goal. Battle for it there. Comes free to Demler. Demler ahead. On for Jasic. That pass far side. Near side. Jasic man cutting to the net is Baker. Trying to find him. And it goes through everybody. Picked up far side. No. Penalty coming up. Gives a go on the engineers. Or is it? I yeah, think so. It's yeah, gonna it's going to be a hook. Here's more for a hook. Yep. He hooked Corey Kalk, I believe, trying to go to the net, or was it Baker? Either uh, way, it's going to be a penalty here in the first of the game. Yeah, Perry Mears more just uh, tracking his man down the uh, down the center. Good middle lane drive as uh, you know Dartmouth attacks pretty wide. They had a pass come from uh, the red line on one side all the way to the blue on the total far wall, get the engineers spread out a little bit and uh, force Mears Moore to kind of tie up his man to keep him from getting a scoring chance. Moore takes the penalty. It's the first of the game. First power play for Dartmouth, 13.1% on the year. The engineers penalty kills 78.2%. Yao near side, down low. As Dartmouth uh, was one for four on the power play the last time these two teams met. As Jerry can't clear it out, kept in at the near point by Yao. Far side, Kalk. Four forwards out there on the power play for Dartmouth. Bakers, close range shot there from Jasic, turned away by Marshall. Stripped away from Tierney's before he could shoot. Now Yao near side, he lines up and hammers it wide. Off the back of the net, picked up by Grant. Man breaking his Tierney's, trying to find him. Maybe a chance here, shorthanded. Walking in Tierney's, looks a shot, and there's a right toe save there by Buffalo. You can see Tierney's leaking out the whole time. Looking for that uh, pass off the boards. That's a design play. Now Whiffen pokes it free. It's the shorthanded club. Whiffen and Tyrannies who have combined for the last few shorthanded goals for RPI. They assisted on the other's goal last time out, and Whiffen had a shorty last year. Not to be here as Dartmouth sets up once again on the attack. 54 seconds to go on the manpower advantage. Yao near side. Drops it back to the blue line for Kolk. Far side, Jasic. Pad save, rebound in front. Engineers can't clear again. Morello this time had a try. And he put it right on the tape of Kalk at the blue line. Collision in the corner. Another penalty coming up here. Who are they going to get? There's a Dartmouth player down. I think they're going to be up a couple men here for 37 seconds. Yeah, I would, I would suspect so. It's going to be a board. As he just, uh, yeah, 
It's Barker. Baker. Baker. Excuse me. Baker just appears above the half wall from our point of view here. TJ Samick going to be the call here on the board. So 37 seconds, a five on three time for Dartmouth. They can, I want to say, put the game away because they've been up four to one this year already on RPI. And the engineers came back, but they can make this a tougher comeback again for the engineers. Yeah, that's right. Still a lot of time left, so um, they're meeting quickly at their bench, try to get their first unit a little blow, get them back out there. But uh, yeah, this is a big opportunity for the Big Green, obviously. And so if the engineers can come away with these, as he announces, uh, PA is announcing the penalty, and it's a five minute major. Oh my. For boarding as uh, Samick came in from straight behind his man. So uh, that's going to change the outlook a little bit here. Right now they're just going to focus on the, uh, the 37 seconds, try to kill that, and then uh, keep rolling them. Big defensive zone face-off win there. Should kill off a decent amount of this 37 seconds of five on three. But the rest of the five minutes, of course, looms. That makes this final 30, now 22 seconds, that much bigger. Near side, shoot, cross ice feed to flex up into the air. And now back to the point once more. Less near side for shoot. Interestingly, they go two defensemen at the blue line, and it cannot be handled by Laz. That'll do it for the Moore penalty. He's out of the box. But Dartmouth breaks in here, two on one. On the power play, centering pass right out in front. They score. It's Seller. And it's a 4 to 1 Dartmouth lead. A power play goal, of course, with the major penalty. They'll get another opportunity here. It'll keep going till this five minutes is up. Yeah, Perry, that's a tough break. Uh, tough break for the engineers. Obviously, they were able to kill off the 37 seconds. Never even let Dartmouth get set up in their box plus one. But a uh, little two on one. And Wilson tries to lay down and take away the pass, but a good step on the far wall. Um, just waits him out a little bit, makes the pass across the crease, and Seller tucks one right over the right pad. Face off here, one back by the Engineers. Shot down ice by Riley, wide a goal, sticked away. So a power play goal for Dartmouth, still four minutes left on the major penalty to TJ Samick. And Connor Yao will skate it down the ice. Near side, Jacek towards the point, but nobody there. Yao was more towards the center of the ice. It'll force uh, the puck back into the zone, far side. RPI defending here. Falling down was Riley. Puck goes behind the goal. Kept in at the far point. No, man breaking. Hayher shorthanded. Hayhurst walking in. Hayhurst shoots. He scores! A shorthanded goal for Jacob Hayhurst. And it's 4-2. to two. That's a great response from the engineers, Perry. Hayhurst just takes advantage of a little mishandle on the far point. He just beats his man pure speed up the wall. Takes one little step to the middle, just changes the angle slightly on Buffalo, and he rifles that puck low blocker side, rang off the post and in. Great shot. So great moment for the engineers. Uh, obviously a great goal, good time to get it, and uh, Hayhurst at least is fired up. Center ice draw here, won by the engineers. Far post, excuse me. Yeah, a rifle of a shot from Hayers is ninth of the year. Shot in deep by the Big Green. Behind the goal, Seller can't control it, uh, control it rather, and the engineers fire it down. Picked up here by the Big Green. It's fed along far side. Broken up at center, or at the top of the circle rather by Polito, cleared the center. Two and a half to go on the penalty, the five minute major. We're halfway through the major now. Six and a half to go in the second period. Shot in by the big green. 
Wilson trying to hammer it out far side. Second effort. Tyrannies trying to drag it with him. Has a man in front. Tyrannies is held up a bit. And now a couple of players go down. Oh, Tyrannies might have gotten away with one there. <laughs> but maybe the refs don't want to put RPI down two again, so they let it all go. Which in the end is probably better off for everyone. Here's Corey Cole in the far side. Working it up the boards. Wilson has his man tied up. He'll kick it up for Whiffen. Whiffen trying to clear and does out to center. Well, Perry, this is, uh, I can tell you, this is the most energy that any of the engineers have showed all game in this five minute kill. That's what, you, maybe it's what the engineers needed, even though they gave up a goal. They got it back, so I guess that's a wash. And now it's gloved. Out of play, it hit off of Wilson's glove, but it went into the Dartmouth bench. And Dartmouth, and I think Wilson's claiming that someone was reaching out over the bench to touch the puck. And of course, that would change where this faceoff comes. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, going to stay in center ice here. But anyways, yeah, I think there's just a just just a couple engineers maybe uh, that are pressing a little higher up up front, and I think that uh, their teammates should be seeing that if you press this Dartmouth team, especially their decor, you can cause turnovers and get your chances. So uh, I think everybody else needs to pick up on that for the engineers here. Offside as the last couldn't keep it in. Minute 20 left on the Samick major penalty. 522 left in the second period. It's 4-2 Dartmouth. And it's been kind of a wild one here. But if the engineers can get the next goal, especially here in the next five minutes, third period still anyone's game. Absolutely, Perry. This one's still wide open. Moving in far side is Graber. He has three of the four. Shot coming from Les, hit a body. Trying to one-hand it out of the zone as Morello couldn't do so. Back around to the far corner it goes. McLaughlin battles there with Prapavessis. Jerry comes to help out, and the two engineers able to pry it free. It's Prapavessis, the senior from Oakville, Ontario, able to clear it down ice. Dartmouth with the puck. It's Tim Shoup dropping it off. For Graber and hammered in by the last wide a goal. Marshall will play. Wilson's tied up. He gets knocked down. 35 to go on the power play. Puck comes free to Hayhurst and he'll clear it down ice. So Dartmouth one for three on the power play. As it's Reemsma behind his own goal. 14 to go on the power play, the five minute major, which they have, have scored on. But again, I reiterate, so have the engineers, a shorthanded goal. Five seconds to go in the period, fans counting it down. Out of the box comes Samick, 4.02 to go in the second period. Now a steal by Polino in the offensive zone. He'll turn and shoot. Easy stick stop by Buffalo. It'll be lobbed up the wall and flipped in deep by Blankmeyer. And we get a whistle here. And icing on Dartmouth. Face off coming up all the way down in the big green end. Yeah, Perry, this is going to be a pretty important three minutes and 48 seconds for the engineers. Um, you know, they came in here, they came out pretty flat in the second period. Uh, obviously, a little bit of energy coming from the Hayhurst goal, shorthanded. It was a great individual effort. So, uh, good time to uh, show what you're made of here. Draw coming up. To the right of Devin Buffalo. And shot around to the near side. Grant keeps it in at the point. Orval trying to find it. Eventually, Burke does. He'll wing it into the far corner. Prapavesis at the half wall to the corner. Down low. Trying to jam it in front was uh, Jerry. Couldn't quite do so. Kept alive by Burke. Burke into the slot. Hands it off for Orval. He couldn't get the shot away. Burke back to the point. Prapavesis running out of time as he was being closed out by Blankmeyer. Gets it down low for Burke. Burke trying to jam it in at the far post. No. Puck comes free. Still not uh, covered up. Buffalo lost his stick. Grant can't keep it in at the line. Jerry will turn and shoot it back in, but. Burke has to go touch up, and in fact, he'll go off on a change. Under three to go in the second, four to Dartmouth. Big Green have the puck coming out of their own end. It's Demler, far side, slapped into the zone by Mikulowski. 
Now Prapovesis turns it towards Mears Moore, far side of his own zone, down the middle, off the stick of Morello. But he gets a second crack at it and gives it right back in turn at the near half wall. Chopping deep is Morello. Now Donovan Ott fights for it along the far side. Ott picks it up behind the net, has his man wrapped up there. Carried on further to center. Here comes Mikulowski, top of the circle, pulls it back, takes a shot that skims wide along the ice into the near corner. Hard hit by Burgess. And an awkward one at that, but the engineers come away with it. On comes Moore down the middle, far side feed. Ott looking for a shot that deflects wide into the far side corner. Moore down low, continues to do battle there. Last to center, make it uh, Baker rather. Far side circle, it's Mikulowski's shot deflected high in the air off of the defenseman. Into the netting, we'll get a stoppage. 156 to play second period. Dartmouth still leading by 2-4-2. Two, two. They did score a power play goal during the five minute major. Uh, a boarding call on TJ Samick, but Jacob Hayhurst answering with a shorty for the engineers. Yeah, Perry, obviously, um, you know, netting zero is a fine result when you give up a short five on three and a five minute penalty. And um, I got to think that in these last two minutes going into the break, the uh, the Dartmouth Big Green will be surprised to be where they're at in this game considering how, what, what they've done. Well, that puck just snuck in. A goal for Shane Seller. That one squeezed between the post and Marshall, and it's 5-2. to two. Yeah, and you know, a lot of uh, engineers standing around in disbelief, and I kind of am too. Uh, that one kind of just came and uh, was laying behind the net. Behind the goal line, just to the left of uh, Lyndon Marshall, and it seemed like somebody just poked at it. It had to be Seller. Seller threw it. No, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we're going to. Yeah, unfortunately, oh that's not a flattering replay for Lyndon Marshall. He was off the post. Yeah. And uh, that just snuck through there. He uh, he was down in his butterfly, but that puck just. Uh, I don't know how that, that puck went just in. Went right through him underneath the left foot. Looked like it had already been in before Graber came and smashed yeah. it into the back of the net. Puck was already in. Graber was looking for his fourth. He was getting greedy, but that puck was already in. Five-two Dartmouth on a bizarre goal. Gonna give credit to Shane Seller for now his seventh. Now Samica shot, saved by Buffalo. And here's Tierney dropping it back all the way to the point. Near side for Wilson. He'll just shoot it deep. It'll wrap around. Pinching in TJ Samick once more. He's had a couple of chances on the other end of the ice at the offensive end has TJ. RPI trying to once again battle its way back. They were down four to one very briefly before the Payhurst shorthanded goal. But now find themselves down three again at five three or five two rather. Last minute left in the second. Five two big green Todd Burgess near side of his own zone. Good connection to center for Tyrannies. Tyrannies plays it on further. And they're gonna say puck played with a high stick. It was a nifty play. But they're saying Tyrannies knocked it out of the air illegally. It will draw a face off coming up. 46.2 left in the period. And the center ice face off, a neutral ice face off coming. Yeah, handy little play. Unfortunately, uh, works a little better in practice when there aren't any uh, stripes around to tell you no. But, um, you know, 46 seconds left here. I think that RPI just needs to get into the room at this point. Tommy Grant, near side Burgess. Forced into the zone, in deep. Reemsma takes a hit. And now Jerry, 29 to go in the period. Carrying with the puck, Prapovesis drops it back. Shot just wide off the stick of Burke, looking for number two. Uh, 17 to go in the period. Lobbed off the glass out to center. Tommy Grant turns around, picks it up in his own zone far circle. Pressure comes from Corey Kalk, giving away, trying to throw it in front. Still loose there. Uh, a little bit of a hit from Burgess. Puck comes free with one, and that'll do it for period number two. Dartmouth's going to take a three goal lead to the third. They scored twice in the second after scoring twice in the first. Or, excuse me, three times in the second after scoring twice in the first. RPI picked up one in the first, one there in the second. The Hayhurst shorthanded goal, but 
So far, not enough. We had uh, just the two penalties in the period. They were the big ones, though, as Dartmoor was able to capture a power play goal. Uh, Teo shots 26-17 Dartmouth after two. Yeah, and unfortunately that second period was way worse than the first for the engineers. Um, you know, obviously the uh, seller graber pairing, that front line for Dartmouth has uh, pretty much had their way, but really they've just been the benefactor of, you know, three turnovers, kind of a nothing play at the near post that just happened to sneak in past Marshall. And so, you know, credit to them for taking advantage of the chances that they've been getting, but just not enough energy from, uh, from Rensselaer, and they came out pretty flat in the second period, I hate to say it. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard to say, and and uh, I don't know what it is in, with Dartmouth and Lyndon Marshall, but he, he's, he's been sharp for just about every single game over the last month or so. Aside from both times RPI has played Dartmouth, he was pulled the last time, and this time he's given up five. Well, he, he wasn't even allowed to give up five the last time these two teams met. He was pulled after the fourth. This time he's given up five again. And a couple of those goals are a little bit head scratchers when you look at his play. So the good news is on that front, he's had terrific games after those uh, getting getting pulled in the Dartmouth game. So, uh, you know, credit him for putting these, these tough games behind him. He's obviously going to have to do it again regardless of how this one turns out. Hopefully the engineers can pull on a couple back for him. But the case may be, Marshall's been a good job of putting you know, tough performances behind him. We'll see what he's able to do, come out in the third, and at least try to hold Dartmouth at five. See if the engineers can come back here. Yeah, at least at least get one or two and, uh, and show yourself something going into tomorrow. Obviously, a uh, game to play tomorrow. So, um, except, except for there isn't. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, no, there's no game tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> but next week, right. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, then uh, that makes it even tougher. Obviously, with uh, with uh, Marshall being the only goalie really going, Yeah. I don't think he's at any risk of getting pulled. So no matter how he's feeling, he's pretty much going to have to. Fight uh, through, yeah. Yeah, just going to have to come out here. And for the engineers, they're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to at least show something, maybe get one. Just uh, have a little bit of energy and kind of uh, make up for this flat, flat appearance. We are through two periods here at the Houston Fieldhouse. It's Dartmouth 5, RPI 2. You're listening to RPI Hockey, 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.
third period started. We'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union, which provides the funding for WRPI. And all the club-related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. A reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org. You can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so long as WRPI is broadcasting. We'll provide that broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that's WRPI.org. And uh, I shouldn't try to tie my shoe and talk at the same time. I thought I could pull it off. But I ended up butchering. Uh, it's a bad move up here, Butch Barry. Yeah, butchering that uh, a little bit there. Plus, you know, like you mentioned, it's a little cold up here, so, uh, you know, you lose a little dexterity in the fingers. <laughs> That's got to be something like that. It can't be easy on my man in front of me writing his history paper. I want to apologize to the family of River uh, Rimshaw. I was pronouncing his name incorrectly for an entire two periods. But we'll try to correct that. The senior from Huntington Woods, Michigan, picking up his first assist, first point on the year. Rimshaw, the senior defenseman, Pat Salvas, the Dartmouth SID, came over and reminded me that I just made up some pronunciation, I guess, for Rimshaw's name. Anyway, back to action here. We're underway in the third. T.J. Samick will shoot it ahead off the stick of Jaron Burke, and in deep, Hunter Yao takes a hit from Burke. There was a number of those body checks today. Samick takes a shot, and uh, Buffalo just pins it to his chest and holds on for a stoppage. 15 seconds in third period. RPI trails by three. They want to get a quick one if they want to think about coming back here. Yeah, that's absolutely right. These first uh, two, three minutes are going to be important. Uh, Jaron Burke. Just stepped down, threw a pretty good hit down the Zamboni door. It made a pretty good noise, and the door flexed back a little bit. It was a pretty good one from up here. Absolutely. That's why he's in the lineup, uh, not just to score those goals, his first uh, collegiate tally. He's there to throw his body around here in this fourth line with two of RPI's smaller players and Orval and Morello. Uh, it's Orval trying to drive to the middle of the ice. It's broken up. Quinn Foreman back the other way, swept aside by Samick, puck to center. Orval runs into Jaron Burke, and it's Morello who shoots it in. Tim Shoup from behind his own goal as RPI changes all five. Roth dumps it in. Marshall can't slow it up. Prapaves is trying to clear near side wall. No, Foreman keeps it alive. Graber and this group out there. <laughs> Foreman. On for Graber. Five points on the night. Indirect to the point. Making a move is Demler. He'll take a shot. Not held by Marshall. Sprawling out to make a stop. Now it's underneath him. He made the initial save. And then he had to do some acrobatics to keep Quinn Foreman from jamming it in from close range. Yeah, that's right, Perry. He had that uh, he had that scary second where he checked behind him and eventually found it. But... Uh, but there was a body there for the big green jumping on the puck. It looked like it was Foreman who actually skated through the crease behind Marshall and tried to almost go over him. Yeah. I'm not sure that would have counted if he had scored the way he uh, stepped through the RPI goaltender. No, well, puck was in puck there. Puck was in there, so he can go in there. You're right. Oh, yeah. Bouncing at center, Polino couldn't quite corral. Rimshaw to center. And now Moore. Up the boards, far side, tipped in deep by Polino. First one to it, Brady Whiffen. Picked up his sixth goal of the year against Cornell last time out. To the point, Riley, right back down low. Wrapping all the way around to the near side where it's kept in by Moore, who's pinching. Moore flings it across in the air to the far circle. Gathered in by Stout. He'll turn and fling it to the middle of the ice, Polino. Polino turns out of the corner. Near side, Moore hopped over his stick. And he looks to work it down low. Whiffen. Behind the big green net. Had it stolen away. Polino over to help out. And now cleared to center by Kalk and actually ends up in the RPI bench. We get a stoppage here. 17.56 to go in the third period. It's 5 2 Dartmouth. Yeah, a little better shift there. Uh, kind of, I just wish they, uh, wish they seemed like they wanted the puck a little more. Yeah, it's a little bit bizarre. It seems like there would be some fans in here who want T-shirts more than the RPI engineers want the puck. <laughs> they have to want it here. They're down three. Cleared to center by Dartmouth. 
and they ice it. In fact, uh, stats currently shots are 28 18 Dartmouth. Uh, face offs are 27 22 Big Green. Dartmouth one for three on the power play. In that five minute major. Samick. One timer Wilson. He got all of his man in front of him. Marpeka. Crowd of 3,043. So that was pretty close when I guessed 3,000. That might, that might have won me a game of uh, Price is Right. Hey. I think it won you a free soda. <laughs> Played down the middle of the ice. Lyndon Marshall had it for a moment, thought about playing it, then eventually kept it. And we'll draw things up in the engineer's end. It's uh, maybe the third or fourth time today that, uh, that Lyndon Marshall has made a play like that with the puck where he's, you know, kind of looked well, like he was maybe going to cover it, and okay. he just kind of decides. There was one point at least on the uh, on the penalty kill where it looked like he was maybe going to cover, and then at the last second he shoveled it off, and that ended up working out. But, yeah. man, with the way some of these, you know, defensive zone turnovers have gone for the engineers, you got to think that he might want to just shut it down. Yeah. Cover up when you can. Get some whistles. Puck played deep. Prapoves is nice job. Strong on the puck there away from uh, Strong. It has worked out to center. Gobbled back up by Roth. And then shot back the other way. Picked up by Shoup. Across for Roth. Tipped into the zone. Tommy Grant leaves it at the wall for Orval. Or make it Polino rather. Prapoves is indirect off the end boards for his defensive partner. In Grant, tipped deep by Polino once more. 16.45 to play in the third. 5-2 Dartmouth. Only game of the weekend for the Engineers. They have four, four more games left. Fans wanted too many men call. Uh, not happening here as Graber skates it in. We'll go behind the net. He was defended well by Riley. You know, Will Riley picks it up there. Lobbing it high in the air to center. Rimshaw takes a hit. And they're going to call it grasping the puck on Rimsha as he has some words for Jerry apparently who spilled on onto the ice. Yeah, Jerry just came in. Uh, he came in with looking for the cross check there. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looked like he took the worst of it. Then we get the Olympic theme from the RPI Pep Band. Well, of course, the Olympic uh, opening ceremonies, I think they already happened. I'm not sure what time it is over there. And that's talking Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is the uh, engineer, the, excuse me, engineers. The U.S. had a poor shoeing in the brand new uh, doubles, mixed doubles curling so far. That's right. I was, uh, I got quite the curling lesson yesterday. Yeah? Finding out a lot of things from you, Perry. I'm a, oh, that's right. We're talking about it. Here comes Graber into the zone, ripped it a little high, caroms around to, uh, Far side of the RPI zone to center ice. Skips through and all the way down the ice. They wave it off. The icing last takes a hit from Tyrannies. Puck comes through to the point. Samick keeps it in on the backhand. Skips by Ott. Tyrannies takes a hit down low. Puck comes free to the half boards. Graber there. Again, Samick keeps it alive. Bouncing in the middle of the zone. Swept at by Jerry. And it's going to be cleared to center ice by Quinn Foreman. Wilson. Stick handling. Foreman. Thought he carried the puck across the line. Linesmen have a somewhere to be, and they don't blow the whistle. Here's Wilson behind the net. I think they're trying to make their movie time later. <laughs> Not sure what they're even seeing at this point, but here's Samick down the middle. Chipped in deep off the stick of Ott, and they'll uh, RPI will get a change. And here's Yao. Grant. Up ahead for Burgess. Into Hayhurst. Trying to give it back to Burgess in the air. Cleared out to center ice and all the way down. That doesn't look like it'll have the legs for icing. No. Prapovess is back to get it. Third period is five minutes old. RPI still down three. Good touch pass off the wall for Whiffen. On for Hayhurst. Hayhurst a shot high and wide of the top right corner. Kept in far side half wall by Burgess. Hayhurst there. Trying to dig it out of some skates. Whiffen now in the near corner. 
He does battle there with Shoup. Loose to Hayhurst. Hayhurst in the corner. Spinning in the near corner is Jacob Hayhurst. Back to the point. Prabhavessa. A lane to shoot. A glove save made. Looked like he saw it well. Buffalo. The Dartmouth netminder holds on here. Yeah, just a nice little pull and shoot from Prabhavessa. This actually had, uh, had a man in front. Didn't quite set the screen the way he wanted to, I think, and almost got a stick on the redirect. Face off coming. Near side of the Dartmouth zone. Morello to take the draw up against Jamie McLaughlin. Rim far side. Riley throws it towards the goal. Hit the boot of Demler. Kicked into the RPI zone now. Will Riley back to pick it up. Left behind for more. More near side for Burke. He'll turn it up ice. Jaron Burke down the middle. Into the neutral zone. Still stick handling Jaron Burke. Burke still on the move. All the way down low. Jaron Burke in the corner. Back to the point. Riley. Near point Moore. Moore flips one towards goal. Blocker saved by Buffalo. In the near corner now. It's Jaron Burke once more. Shielding away. From Demler. Burke now. Still with Demler on his back. Goes back behind the net. Hands it off for Morello. Morello turning and shooting. And Buffalo with a glove save. Just didn't lift that one quite as much as he wanted to. Morello coming out from behind the cage. Yeah, it was a good little step on the near post. Uh, Burke working the puck down low on that end wall. Gets it, uh, gets it to Morello. And he made a nice little step out. And there was maybe room over that glove side. But uh, Buffalo's a big body in that's back there. Draw coming here. Far side of the Dartmouth zone now. 13-39 to play in the third. 5-2 Dartmouth lead. Fed down low by T.J. Samick off the Engineers' offensive zone face-off win. Billy Jerry in the near corner. Watched by Yao. Engineers have the size advantage down low. He's pried out of there by Foreman, however. Out to center ice. Tap free. T.J. Samick. Far side, tip deep by Ott. First one there is going to be Lass, who plays it far side. Samick keeps it alive on the backhand. Bouncing puck in the far circle. Played by Graber. Connecting to Lass near side. Lass into the attacking zone. To the circle, Lass. Drop pass. Stolen away. He's broken up by Jerry. Lass gets it back down low. Far side, wrist shot coming off the side of the net on the try from Rutherford. Now trying to play it behind was Jerry. He lost sight of it. It's behind him against the boards. Seller, far sides. Faking a shot there was Roth. Uh, shot did come, deflected to the near side. Tyranny can't get it out. Hit along the near boards by Samick. He and Blankmeyer go into it. Jerry there as well. 12 and a half to go in the third. Not much doing. Strong trying to walk it out in front. Comes free to Shupa. Rista right on. And a save by Marshall. There was some traffic in front. But Shupa was able to get that one all the way to the net. Uh, before Marshall uh, stopped him there. Yeah, fine save for Marshall. Out and up. Right in the bread basket. Uh, shot from the point. I think we just saw a little microcosm of how this game has been going. As uh, the puck bounces off Marshall into the corner. And uh, there's nobody else there. But three engineers standing in front of the net. Just kind of looking at each other. Deciding who's going to go get it. Face off coming to the right of Marshall. Worked free to the point. One timer deflected wide. Rutherford trying to jam it back out in front. Comes all the way free to the blue line where it's kept in by Roth. Now another shot redirected wide. Shot and a goal. Back door Rutherford. And it's six to two. Nothing Marshall could do about that. It was just uh, determination down low from this big green. No, yeah, that's some good puck movement, Perry. Uh, the uh, D to D pass across the blue line to the left-hand side, and then the shot came down, a little redirect right off the pad, kind of a pass to himself. And uh, yeah, Blankmeyer, Blank Blank yeah. the, uh, the right winger from Oak Park, Illinois, made a nice play across the uh, across the crease to his man Rutherford who put it away for a pretty easy goal. Both fourth lines have a goal now. As uh, Blankmeyer with his first assist on the year sophomore finding Rutherford for his third tally 6 2 Dartmouth. 
He made sure of it. He got down to a knee to make sure he squared it right across to his uh, friend Bla uh, Rutherford for the goal. Now Whiffen back the other way. Three on two for RPI. Shot by Whiffen. That was blocked by uh, the defenseman Rimshaw. And now Whiffen down low. He double teamed. Comes free to Hayhurst. Back to the point. Riley fakes the shot. Dumps it right back down low. Shot around to the near side by Demler. Now a centering pass does get through everybody, including Burgess, who is wrapped up with Jasic. It'll be lobbed out to center, knocked out of the air by Moore. Carried on further by Kalk. Kalk walking in, throws it across. One-timer Rimshaw. That one hammered wide. Mears Moore with a glove save on that one. Absolutely. Sticking something out in the way. Now another hammered shot wide by Les. Shot out of the zone by Moore to relieve some of the pressure. And Les go back to pick it up for Dartmouth. Back, uh, back into the zone comes McLaughlin. His shot was blocked by Samick. Now picked up by Wilson. Near side. Here's Burke. Ahead for Stout. Owen oh, Stout will lob it in deep and chase. First one to it. Going to be Brendan Les. Carried far side. It's McLaughlin. Here's Mikulowski. A shot from a tight angle. Saved by Marshall. High off the glass to center. Burke can't corral. Shoop can. Far side, Warpeka into the RPI zone. Drop pass at the point. Shot off a skate. Comes free to Shoop down low. Warpeka a shot right on and a save by Marshall. Not a good angle shot there, but Dartmouth is going to keep throwing pucks at the net until they don't score. They've scored six times here so far. But they've absolutely been using that strategy. They've just been tossing everything at the net. Um, Marshall's done a pretty good job of absorbing what comes above his pads, but uh, you've seen a couple times the puck just bounces right off those pads, and the Dartmouth guys are doing a good job getting there, recovering those pucks, and not getting cleared out, so they're getting good chances. Draw here. One by the big green. Foreman around the net, poke free by Wilson. Back to the point from Seller. Right back down low it comes. Coming up on the halfway point of the third period. Now we are halfway through, and it's a two on two rush for the RPI the other way. Billy Jerry chips it in. Shoop run into by Tyrannies. Shoop knocked down, picked up by Jerry. Still just the two penalties in this game. Both of them on the engineers, and they came back to back in the second period, including a five minute major on TJ Samick, which resulted in one goal each way. A power play goal and a shorthanded goal. In the corner now, Prapavesis. Off a skate, picked up by Jerry. He'll use the near boards to clear it out to center for Tyrannies. Helping it up the wall. On comes Ott. He's hit there by Rimshaw, but comes away with a puck. Ott trying to be a little too cute there with a drop pass from Morello. Back comes Graber the other way. Graber centering through everybody. That'll look out in the crowd there. and It'll hop out of play, so he... With the result of that uh, Rutherford goal, we do not have two uh, natural hat tricks in this game. I was on pins and needles, too. You know? Right. Yeah. Because that would have had to have been Seller's goal, and it clearly wasn't. No, certainly not. 6 2 Dartmouth, 9 6 to play in the third. Take a look at the stats here so far. Shots uh, 35 21, big green. Shots attempted, which is a factor and how they figure out uh, Corsi number. Corsi number, thank you. Uh, 50 to 32, but you also have to take into consideration you have to subtract the power play shots. But anyway, even strength shot mm -hmm. attempts. Just to give you a rough idea of where they're at, 50 to 32, Dartmouth. Face-offs are 32-25 in favor of the Big Green as well. Block shots, the engineers have gotten in front of nine. Dartmouth, five. And... Uh, that's been it. Five point games each for two big green players. Three and two for Graber. Two and three for Shane Seller. Yeah, and I think the um, the Corsi number, if you will, whatever it is, is definitely pretty telling tonight. We've talked about it a couple times, but the Dartmouth team just more willing to put pucks at the net, more willing to, you know, take it to the rack. Whereas, you know, we just saw a play. Ott came down the half wall here on the left hand wing and uh, took a hit and made a nice play but then passed the puck off to a Dartmouth forward who was skating out of his own. Here comes Riley. Good look ahead pass for Hayers. Couldn't quite corral. 
Rimshaw now has to deal with Hayhurst on his hip. Demler behind the goal, finding Rutherford. Far side of the RPI, or excuse me, the Dartmouth zone. Slowed up by Demler. Playing in his 24th game is Brendan Demler. Still looking, excuse me, for that uh, first collegiate point. All these goals in this game. He wants a piece of the action, so far doesn't have any. Former Des Moines Buccaneer. Same team that the uh, former engineer, uh, Jason Kasdorf, played for. Oh, okay. On the USHL. Of course, Kazzy playing in Cincinnati for the Cyclones in the ECHL right now. 8.20 left in the third. 6-2 Dartmouth, less. Throws it towards the goal. It's picked away by Moore. He'll skate it up ice, handing it off for Morello. Morello into the zone near side against the boards. All the way in. Morello, a drop pass. Comes free to Samick. Samick at the point. Fan on the first try. Works it down low once more. Morello, near side for Mears Moore. Far side, Samick. Good puck movement by the engineer. Down low, Hayhurst. Hayhurst hands it off for Samick, moving up the far boards. Samick in the corner. Still TJ Samick. Samick centers. Ice shot goes wide. Carries to the near side. Where it's gathered in by Jasek. Alex Jasek to center ice. Shot on goal from Kalk right to, after entering the zone. Not tough for Marshall to handle. He'll hold on to it there. Yeah, 737 left here. And uh, yeah, like you said, a couple good passes. Uh, no real no real threats towards the net on that one for the engineers. But uh, that's the kind of play that they really have wanted all game with the way that they've been trying to move the puck around and just not uh, just needing to tighten up the screws a little bit. Face off. Engineers have it back behind their own goal. TJ Samick with it there. He'll hand it off for Brady Whiffen. Engineers down 6 2. As it's flipped in deep. Polino throws a hit behind the net. Turning and firing wide is Whiffen. As it's worked up the near side wall. Broken up there, Whiffen. And now Wilson. Far side of his own zone, down the middle, tipped along by Burke on for Polino. Polino tried to advance it for Burke as well, but it's chipped out of the zone by the big green. Now Graber turning back towards his own end, finds Rimshaw tipped in deep by Foreman for Dartmouth. Far side, Tommy Grant pins it against the boards with his skate. Graber knocks it away. Graber and Grant now going at it in the corner. Foreman hands it off for Graber. Didn't see it. He was tied up. Now allows the engineers to move it out to center. They want to move. Throw it off a skate. Did Ott fed near side behind Tyrannies. He'll track it down in the near corner. Evan Tyrannies now off the boards. Moving. Still Tyrannies on the move. Stick handles through some sticks. Fires it down low. And first one to it will be Demler. Demler ahead only as far as the neutral zone. Now let's say he's played with a high stick. He'll draw a whistle. 6.04 to play, 6-2 Dartmouth. And the engineers uh, looking to try and maybe get uh, get one back here. Not, no moral victories, of course, but if you can play well at the end of this game, you can at least salvage uh, something from this third period. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, I only mentioned the, uh, the no game tomorrow. I, uh, I somehow suspect that there will be some practice tomorrow. Whether that involves hockey pucks or not, I can't be sure. Right. Here's Rimshaw moving it down low. It'll be interesting to see because the coach said he gave the team the weekend off. I don't know if that means that'll change or the fact that they, <laughs> they may, you know, next week uh, might be a little bit more difficult than previously uh, thought. Anyway. Yeah. Faceoff coming up in the neutral zone here, 520 or 552 to play in the third. Right, the, the the fight just wasn't there. Well, interesting to see what Coach Smith has to say after this one. He tends to find things that others don't in the engineers' play. He knows the team best, of course. He sees them every single day, practice and otherwise. Here's Stout moving in, looking for the tight angle shot. It goes over the top. Did the net come off? I don't think so. 
What's the call here? I think he did kick the net off. Okay. Um, <laughs> came yeah. back, came back down. But sure. Just a little, yeah, just a little walk in, looking for the, uh, looking yeah, for oh. the high and tight. Yeah, if you're Owen, that blocker. If you're Owen Stout, looking for your first collegiate goal, he saw his buddy uh, Jaron Burke get one, and he wanted one himself. Yeah, why not? Face off in the Dartmouth zone. 6-2 Big Green with five and a half to play. Shoop. Wrapping it far side, kept in by Riley. Tip towards goal and just wide from Whiffen. Would have been a highlight reel goal. Whiffen knocked that one out of the air. More far side. Riley lost it in his skates. Has to turn back towards center. Shot back near side by Moore. Or for Moore, rather. Near side, Hayhurst. Tight angle. Thought about a shot. Turns it back to the wall. Takes a hit as he was double teamed. And it's Corey Kalk to center. Glove down by Mears Moore. Near side at his own blue line. Pops in the air out to center. Hayhurst lost it to Roth. Stolen back by Whiffen. Whiffen skates it near side. Feeds it wide a goal. Gathered in by Shoup there. Intercepted by Burgess at the half boards. Todd Burgess tied up. Puck comes free. Whiffen trying to find it. Whiffen hit hard. Penalty coming up here on Dartmouth. It's going to be a board. It's going to go on Baker. And now we get more Kalk and Wilson. Start to get involved after the play. I believe it's just going to be the one penalty. Matt Baker for boarding with 4.45 left. The engineers will have their very first power play of the game. Yeah, you know, I, guess, I would, but. yeah, it could have gone either way. I would not have expected them to call any penalties on the uh, on the extracurriculars, but definitely, uh, definitely a dangerous check there. Right from behind, just in that dangerous hmm. area where yeah. Burgess's feet were, you know, three, four feet away from the wall. And uh, and his uh, his chin comes down right at that dasher level, so those ones can always uh, they can always end up pretty scary. I guess the only thing is you could very much argue that that was quite a similar hit right. that sent Samick off for five minutes earlier on. So um, yeah, I'm not sure how to explain that. Yeah, really an unnecessary hit too in a 6-2 game. I think if this was a closer game, you might find that you're maybe a little more amped up. But in this situation, especially, there's no need to go in like that. Anyway, a power play for RPI. It's first. One-timer Wilson hammers it on goal from the far point. It's turned aside by Buffalo and cleared. Also a freshman Baker. You have to take that into consideration as well. And uh, freshmen, as they often do, sometimes make freshman mistakes. And there's a senior making a mistake on an ice. And they'll send the faceoff back down to the RPI end. Yeah, I think Wilson saw the play. Uh, his friend did not. Uh, I'm not sure who it was on the near side wing here. Just didn't nope. have a stick down. And yeah, but um, you know, besides that, honestly, credit to uh, credit to the Big Green for only taking that one penalty the whole day. Oh yeah, they've been uh, definitely committed to playing it as a mistake-free as you can be. Less wraps it back in off the. Offensive zone faceoff win. The Big Green are shorthanded, so they back off. Prapavesis, far side for Wilson. He'll shoot it in. Comes free to the near side corner. Polino looking to cycle, finding Stout, who plays it through his own legs. He found Ott, but Ott couldn't corral, and now it's picked up by Seller. He'll skate it to center and just shoot it down. Under four to play in regulation. Minute 11 left on the RPI power play. They're first. Engineers man advantage on the year 12.4%, 15 to 121. The Big Green on the kill 83.1%. They've killed off 64 out of 77. Of course, the Ivy League schools playing a fewer number of games than the others. This is RPI's 30th game of the year. While uh, Dartmouth has only uh, played in 23. Swept out of the zone again, this time by Mikulowski. Helped behind the net by Marshall. Moved in far side. Riley upended on his way into the zone. But they say legally. There's a man breaking shorthanded. And it's Seller. He wants that hat trick. Rister on goal. Easy stop from Marshall. And it's Tyrannies now. Will Graber already with a natural hat trick for the Big Green. It put them up. Three to one. They're actually up four to one before RPI made it four two on a shorthanded goal 
by Jacob Hayhurst. Out of the box comes Baker, turns into a two on one for the big green. Baker walking in, fed across, and they score. And it's Cam Strong. And it's seven to two, second goal of the year for Strong, the sophomore from Billings, Montana. And uh, sometimes you, you get the luck of the draw on a man coming out of the box. That's certainly what happened there. Would have been much, much less costly if you had not, as would have been one on one for Baker. Now we get a chance to see our first look at Kyle St. Dennis, the sophomore netminder who's backing up Marshall tonight. Yeah, and unfortunately, Perry, this is one that I can't honestly pin on Marshall at all. Just, uh, like you said, very lucky break. The uh, right place, right time for Baker stepping out of the box. He gets the puck on his stick on the two on one, makes the right play, throws a pass over the uh, legs of the defender, and Strong does a nice job to redirect it home. But uh, Marshall very, very much out to dry in that situation, Perry. St. Dennis from uh, Katna, or Katona, New York, former uh, member of the Syracuse Club in the USPHL. This is his first collegiate action. Came on with 237 left after the goal. It's wrapped in by Roth around to the near side for Burke. And now picked up by Kolk in deep. Kolk behind the goal. Trying to go all the way around. He went down. Kept in by Rimshaw. He carries it up the far boards. Takes a shot. Saved by St. Dennis. First collegiate save for St. Dennis. Who stands at 6'2", 180 pounds, the left-hand catch. Grant up the wall, through his legs goes Orval to Morello. Morello drop pass, shot coming, and a save made on Stout. Maybe the shin pad stop in the end by the defenseman. Oh yeah, a couple, a couple big green trying out for goalie on that one. Now Rutherford back the other way, minute 22 left. Fan on the first shot, second try, intercepted by Samick. Quickly ahead, far side, into the zone, Polino. Waiting for help, fires it off the end boards. Gathered in for a second by Samick, who had jumped in on the play. Now Jerry near corner, indirect to the point for Moore. Arister through traffic, redirected, they score! Patrick Polino on the rebound, and he says finally his first goal on the year. And he's had so many chances putting himself in good spots. He works so hard. He plays on the penalty kill on the power play and Patrick Polino his first on the season after scoring four as a freshman last year. Good to see Patrick in the score column. Yeah that one's as easy as they get Perry. Uh, you know they worked the puck around a little simple shot from the point through traffic and uh, it just lands on his stick there. Nothing that anybody could have done about that one and uh, Polino gets his first. 7-3 is the Dartmouth lead as they try to jump in on the attack. It's broken up. Gloved at, pushed down to center, and now here comes Hayhurst. On for Whiffen, deflected in deep with 43 seconds to go. Hayhurst to the near point for Moore. Moore, a shot that goes wide. Near side, chopped at by Mikulowski. Can't clear the zone. 27 seconds to go. Ott in the corner. He's wrapped up, tried to center. Only players there were Big Green. It's Shoup who carry to center, just dump it in with 13. 10 seconds left. Prapovest is behind his own goal. He takes a hit, lost the puck. Rutherford drops it off. Only Orval there with three, two, and one. That'll do it for this one. Dartmouth takes it 7 3. And a game that obviously had a lot of scoring chances, had a lot of goals, some of them pretty, some of them not. But that's a lot of times what you have in a 7-3 game, and that's what we had here. Dartmouth finishes one for three in the power play, RPI 0 for one. The uh, shots were 39-23 in favor of Dartmouth. Yeah, Perry, unfortunately, uh, you know, the first period, the first period there was not that much uh, that that the engineers really needed to be worried about. They came out, they got their chances. They didn't, uh, you know, they gave up one bad goal there and a bad turnover by Marshall. But uh, they had a few scoring chances more than their shot count showed in that period. 
But then, uh, you know, they came out in the second period behind by one, and they seemed to just kind of lay down at that point. Obviously, credit to the uh, to the Dartmouth Big Green. They defended as well as they had to and took advantage of their chances when they were basically handed to them. So um, they'll pretty easily walk away with the win here as uh, Devin Buffalo gets his ninth on the season. Yeah, Buffalo improving to nine, eight, and one with the victory. The loser is Marshall. He drops to four, 14, and two. Bring down the scoring in this one while Teo comes up with his offensive and defensive engineers. Uh, Jaron Burke scoring the game's first goal for RPI at 550 the first period from Jake Morello and Jasper Orval. His first collegiate tally made it one nothing engineers. Then at 908 of the first Will Graber scoring from Shane Seller and Rivers Rimshaw to make it 1 1. Then it was Graber from Foreman and Seller at 1136 of the first to make it 2 to 1. Graber completed the natural hat trick at 428 of the second period to make it 3 to 1 big green Seller picking up the assist there. Then it was Seller scoring at 1141 of the second from Graber and McLaughlin. RPI pulled one back to make it 4 2 a shorthanded goal by Jacob Hayers at 1228. Lone assist to Jared Wilson. But then Seller scored again his second with assists to Foreman and Graber at 18 11 made it 5 2. Colin Rutherford made it a 6 2 game at 752 of the third from Ryan Blankmeyer and Tim Shoup. Then Cam Strong scored at 17 23 make it 7 2 from Matt Baker. RPI scored the game's final goal. Patrick Polino is first of the year at 19 minutes even from Mears Moore and Billy Jerry. That was Polino's first on the year. 20 saves for Devin Buffalo. As I mentioned, he picked up the win his ninth. And Lyndon Marshall, 31 stops at the other end. Kyle St. Dennis, one save in his collegiate debut. A thousand save percentage for Kyle St. Hey, Dennis. That's pretty good. Uh, defensive engineer of the game, you know, I hate to see him give up six, but uh, definitely save of the week candidate for, uh, oh, yeah. for Lyndon Marshall. Man, tell you what. He, uh, he did not get the help he needed from his teammates, but that save across the crease, sprawling with his right pad, great save. Stayed with it for the follow-up save, too. So uh, defensive engineer for him and offensive engineer. Uh, great to see Jaron Burke stepping out confidently from behind the net, moves to the slot area, and buries one for his first collegiate goal. Obviously, uh, not the result they wanted, but that'll be a moment that he'll probably remember for a while. Absolutely. Uh, before we go, I'd like to remind you the next RPI sports broadcast is next Friday. RPI taking on Princeton in Princeton, New Jersey at Hobie Baker Rink. 7 o'clock puck drop there. Also the next hockey broadcast, of, broadcast, of course. I'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union, which provides the funding for WRPI and the club-related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. A reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser at WRPI.org. Pick our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as WRPI is broadcasting. We'll provide that broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that's WRPI.org. want to, of course, thank our inboarder, Parker, back at the station. Thanks a lot, Parker, for getting us on the air and keeping us there. Could not do this without you. Once again, your final score from the Houston Fieldhouse. It was Dartmouth 7 and RPI 3. You've been listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.